Hey there, today we're going to solve question number two of the following paper. Question one was solved in the last video, so you can go check that one out. That one was about in company records, and this one's about limited companies. Here we are. T Limited statement of financial position at 20th February 2021 included the following. Okay. Equity issued capital. Ordinary shares of zero point five dollars each. In total, they're worth four fifty thousand. Their share premium and retained earnings. Fine. On thirty thirty first August two thousand twenty one, the directors paid an interim dividend of zero point zero five dollars per share. Per share. Be careful. Don't make the mistake. Don't take four fifty thousand. That's not the number of shares. That's just the value of shares. What's the number of shares? Well, four fifty thousand is. The number of shares, oh sorry, the, the amount or the value of shares, you divide that by value of each share, you get the number of shares, which is 900,000 in this case. Fine. And they say each of the shares got 0 0.05 as dividends. So 900,000 times 0 0.05 is, let me check. 900,000 times 0 0.05 is 45,000. That's our interim dividend. Let's move on. Identify two factors which directors should take into account when deciding the amount of a dividend payment to shareholders. Okay, so before directors decide to pay any dividends, what should they consider? Logically speaking, they should have enough cash. They should have enough liquidity, right, to be able to pay any dividends. Secondly, they should have revenue reserves available because those are the ones you can use to pay dividends. More specifically, retail earnings should be adequate. If they're not adequate, well, we're not able to pay any dividends, right? We don't have enough money. Uh, for better understanding, or let's say for a more complete answer, I'll be pasting the mark scheme answer over here so that I can... Just look at what the mark scheme says about it. We'll have first this we'll first have discussion. I'll give you my opinion. And then you can just watch the mark schemes answer and get some inspiration from there. There we go. Give this a good look. Understand the points. We'll move on. You can pause the video if you wish. Next question of such nature, you can stop the video, pause the video, think about the answer, and then let me show you the mark scheme answer, right? Let's move on. On 31st, uh, sorry, on 1st December 2021, the directors made a bonus issue on the basis of two ordinary shares for every three ordinary shares currently held. So, currently we have 900,000 shares. If you remember from the previous page, we have 900,000 shares. And they say for every three, let's divide that by three, for every three shares, we get two more or we issue two more. That means we're going to issue 600,000 new shares. Fine. The directors wish to leave the reserves in their most flexible form. Now remember, in bonus issues, you don't receive any cash. Bonus issues made for free. But you have to fund them from somewhere, right? So you will be having this extra share capital, not of 600,000, that's just the number of shares. What's the value of shares? Well, times each value is worth if you go up 0 0.5 you remember that if you go up please go back to the video or i can just show it to you if you want each share is worth 0.5 right so if you're going to issue 600,000 new shares it means the worth or the value or the amount of those shares is dollars 300,000 we need to fund those from our own reserves as the directors wish to keep them in the most flexible form that means we first use the capital reserves and then we use the revenue reserves. In this case, we'll be first using the share premium to fund the bonus issue and then the remaining amount will be funded with the retained earnings. Okay. Now, you should remember when an equity account goes down, it'll be debited. So share premium will be debited and for the remaining amount, because share premium is only 120,000, 122,000, 
For the re remaining amount, we'll be using retained earnings. Retained earnings. Well, how much would that be? Because we are looking forward to raise 300000 and 122 is funded by share premium. So the remaining amount, which is 300 minus uh, 122, 178,000. The rest of 178,000 will be funded with retained earnings. And of course, your share capital is going up. When an equity account goes up, it is credited. So we're going to credit this by 300,000. That's your share capital account fine I think this is looking good negative is not required perfect let's move on on 28th February doesn't that's the end of the year because the year started on the previous year ended 28th February 2021 if you go up and check the directors paid a final dividend of 0 0.07 per share per share per share okay how many shares are issued at the moment well 900,000 originally plus 600,000 the new ones that's 1.5 million 1 million 500,000 in total that's the number of shares issued at the moment right and we are giving out 0 0.07 per share so that's 1.5 million times 0 0.07 let's just quickly get, put that in my calculator 1500 Zero 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 times zero point zero seven. That's one oh five triple zero one zero five zero zero zero. Okay, that's the, the final dividend amount. That's the profit. Okay. The question is to find closing return earnings. It's a very common question. So if you're watching this video, make sure you understand this for once and it will help you almost in every single past paper or every single exam session, I guess. So what we do is we start with the opening retained earnings, which is usually given in the question, 342000, That's the opening retained earnings. Now there'll be some adjustments to the opening retained earnings. The certain amounts going out will be subtracted, coming in will be added. You should know dividends are paid out of retained earnings. So we'll be subtracting 44,000 from that. In the beginning, we had 342,000, 45,000 was used to pay dividends. Fine. What happens next? Next, uh, we used the retained earnings to issue some bonus shares. So that's 178 going down again. You're using up these reserves. Minus 178. Thousand. What else happened to our return earnings? Next, um, well, you can add the profit, or you can also first subtract the final dividend. The final dividend paid was one hundred five thousand, and then some money also came in to the return earnings one one four zero zero zero. These, these are all the adjustments, I believe, because we went through it all the way from above. Anything required adjustment? Anything that required adjustment in? Retain earnings we did. Basically, we have covered everything that was necessary. So let's just add it all up. 342 minus 45 minus 178 minus 105 plus 114. That's 128. 128,000. And that's your closing retained earnings. You can also call that retained earnings. Write that in full, please at 28th February 2022 okay that's just one way to indicate that this is your answer you don't have to because the examiner would know but it's better to be safe let's move on you state three reasons why a company sometimes makes a rights issue of shares rather than a general issue of shares in the stock market let's say now for this of course you need to know what is rights issue it means you're offering your existing shareholders some new shares at a lower price than the market, usually, at a discounted price from the market. 
Now, the shareholders that currently own your company's shares will be happy to take them, right? Because they only already own shares. They would be okay with owning a few more at a discount. Perhaps they can sell it later. So that's the idea of rights issue. Now, why would a company make rights issue? Number one, they will be quickly subscribed. People are going to take them up. You don't have to convince new people to come in and join your company or be a part of your company because those who already believe in you will get a few more. It'd be faster. They'll be happy to take your shares, right? It'll be easier and faster, let's say. Secondly, secondly, we can say um, the, the control will be retained. Your existing shareholders have a control over the company's decisions through voting. Now, rights issues are made in the same proportion of the current shareholding, so their control won't be affected. The current owners will still have, will still retain uh, control. So I think I, I, over there I said two or three points, couldn't fully keep a record, but it's the best if I just show you the Mark scheme answer because this is a discussion type, a theory type of question, and usually these are understood best with the Mark scheme. You should always attempt with your, in, your, in your own words, but never miss out on the Mark scheme answer on these theory type questions. Okay, because this tells you exactly what the examiners are looking for. Avoid dilution of ownership. This is what I was talking about, about the control. It's less, less expensive. Okay, I should have told you about that because now you don't have to advertise, okay? You don't have to list them necessarily on the stock market yourself. You don't have to approach new shareholders and attract them towards your company. It's less expensive that way. And then it's faster. Maybe maybe some of the students would write that as two separate points. With their own explanations, I think they should accept them as two separate points if you explain them well. Most more likely to be successful fully because you're issuing them to those who already trust in you at a reason at a at a lower price. So it, it's a it's actually a win-win situation for the shareholders and for the company to increase equity share capital. Well, that might happen even with general issue unless it's preference redeemable, but yeah, equity would increase anyway. So uh, that point may not be the strongest, the last one. The other three points are pretty good. Make sure you understand these because most likely they, they might ask you the same questions again. We don't have a f hundred types of questions, right? We just have some theory related to rights issue, bonus issue, and debentures and all those uh, keywords. There's just a little bit to learn. And the exam won't be surprising to you when you learn these concepts. I think that's enough for this video. Wish you all the best. Take care. Have a great day.